Hi, I was never interested in ham radio until I heard about the Flex 5000. Here's Bert Fisher, my teacher, to bring it alive. We're here to talk about the Flex 5000A. Why should you buy it? What is good about it? How does it compare to a radio like the ICOM 756 Pro 3? What features does the Flex 5000A have that some other radios do not have? What do you need to get the Flex 5000A going? What kind of equipment do you need? The Flex 5000A has awakened my interest in amateur radio. I was getting pretty bored with it, but now the technology is very interesting and what you can do with the Flex 5000A is really something, as you will see. We will compare the Flex 5000A with the ICOM 756 Pro 3, and we'll take a little humorous look back at the Heathkit DX40 and where technology has come since then. Some people are concerned that the Flex 5000A doesn't have any knobs. Well, it does have a mouse, and you can also buy one of these things called a shuttle, which will give you all the buttons you really need. But I found out that the mouse works great. Who needs the shuttle? Uh-oh, I hope I didn't break it. Well, let's take a look at what the Flex 5000A can do. I think you'll really enjoy it, find it interesting, and I hope you'll get as excited about it as I did. On an ICOM 756 Pro, all the buttons are black, they're dark, and they're small, and they're hard to read. But with the Flex 5000A, everything's lit up, it's easy to see. And if you're an older ham like I am, you really appreciate the difference in being able to have those buttons just light up and be exciting. You have many different inputs on the Flex 5000. You have a professional XLR type Canon mic input. You can bring in a line input, an RCA plug. Uh, they have something for expansion called Flex Wire. And your outputs include a jack for an external speaker, headphones, and line out as well. So you have a variety of inputs and outputs that you can use. You know, if you have a bad memory like I do sometimes, it's helpful to know what some of these knobs and, and buttons do. Well, look at this. If I put the pointer over an area, it tells me what it does. So I don't even have to go look in the manual. It said samples per audio buffer, smaller settings give less latency. Now if you look at the overall display, you can see there's a sideband station here. There's another sideband station over here. Another sideband station here and another sideband station there. So let's go to lower sideband and go jump on one of these stations. And there's another sideband station way down over here. And let's, uh, he looks like he's pretty strong, so let's uh, jump down there and see what he sounds like. And although the ICOM 756 Pro has memory, you have to scroll through them. But with the Flex, you have a whole listing of memories. I haven't put too many in, but I can go to any place I want. So for example, if I want to go here, I just hit recall, and I'm up on 80 meters. Uh, let's recall, oh, here's a station in China, a shortwave station. Obviously, you can all understand that, and there's a 160 meter AM station. And if you want to give a guy a great signal report, you just hit the record button, record him for a few seconds, and then you can play him back. And here's the playback, and he gets his own signal report. I like to use my rig on uh, 60 meters, and when you click the 60 meter selection, you can vary between the various channels. Also in 60 meters, my 160 meter antenna doesn't match particularly great, so I can use the automatic antenna unit to give me a match. It was also a great AM rig. I've had some excellent quality reports on the AM rig, whereas with the 756 Pro, people tend to call it a rice box. But the quality of this rig on AM seems to be quite good. In this case, you see a very wide filter, but I can narrow that filter down. And I can narrow it down even further. We see several stations here, and we can click on any one of them and just jump right to them. Let's try this one right here. 
and we click on him and there he is and here's another one down here let's click on him and we'll jump right to him uh, try that on the ICOM 756 Pro you don't click another thing I don't like about the 756 Pro you have to turn that knob with your fingers and after a while your fingers do get kind of tired don't have to worry about that with the with the Flex 5000A and here's another station over here let's click on him with CW you can use the hand key or you have the ability to type it out or you have memories and these memories have more than just the one sentence line that you have on the ICOM 756 Pro 3 these memories you can type your whole life story you can also set the speed and you can set some other criteria as well you can adjust the transmit equalization so as you can see here I've kind of boosted the lows and everything else has remained flat but I could also boost the highs if I wanted to well we've come a long way from 1960 when I had a DX40 and the frequency stability on that was awful and you had to tune it up as far as what you need my computer is not very good but it works great with the Flex 5000A. My computer has a Windows Experience Index of 3.0, which is not too good. You also do need a power supply to power the Flex 5000A. A typical 25 amp power supply will work just great. We will have more features on my next video on the Flex 5000A. 